We are now at event number three for the Born Network's Marvel Championship Season 3, and it is the very long event of curling. Now this one will not be spread into two parts, it will be a one-parter, just one very long video, so sit back and relax, here we go. That is the curling board, so as I'm sure you know, if you land on the button, you will get five points, if you land in the red circle, you get three, the white inner circle, you get two, on the blue circle, well the blue very outer circle, you get one point, and if you do not land in any of the circles, you get zero points. That is what we call landing out of the house. So the black markers were with our first to go. We'll land in the one point range, as do the windbreakers, their opponents for this match. And the black markers are going to go right past the windbreakers there and land in the white. So they will have three points overall. The windbreakers aiming very high to bounce off of that back wall to land in the one point again. A three to two so far. Black markers, the consistent point scoring so far. And they're at four points currently. The windbreakers are going to need a good one here. But no, they do not. They land in that one point. And that is going to give another point to the black markers. With two of them landing at... Oh, the black markers hitting each other. And that is just something you really do not want to do in an event like this. Which requires a lot of teamwork. However, they are still winning. And with that pretty poor hit from the windbreakers, the black markers advance. And the Gardeners versus the Wayfinders now. The Gardeners had a very good first event. The second event didn't quite go their way. As they want to keep this keep this championship alive. However, they are up against the Wayfinders, who got their first ever medal in the last event. So this could be a very close one. These two are also kind of rivals of each other, if you will. It's not a, it's not a very big rivalry, but as you can tell from that hit alone, they very much want to beat each other. And now the Wayfinders have a 2-0 over the over the weight of the Gardeners. <laughs> Sorry. However, the Gardeners do get one point with the Wayfinders coming in for their third roll. And now the last marble from each team will be going in a one-to-one -one tie. The Gardeners make a hit off of the Wayfinders. However, that benefits the Wayfinders over the Gardeners. And so all the Wayfinders need to do is avoid that marble, and they do that very perfectly. And so the Wayfinders will advance over the Gardeners. Preliminary Heat 3 now. The Twilights over the Berry Blasters. Another rivalry team-up, or match-up, if you will. This one very much based on strength. Twilights and Berry Blasters, both known for their strong tendencies. As the uh, both of them settle in the two-point range, as the third Twilight comes to also settle in the two-point range at for a 4-2 to two so far. That Berry Blaster just missing the house, not able to roll back in as the next Twilight member will come down now. And it, and it bounces off its own teammate. That is not really what they wanted, and it is not going to be in the house either. Stewards have decided that is not in the house. Ooh, but after that impact, will it be? Yes, it will. The Berry Blasters trying to hit that Twilight, accidentally hitting themselves. Oh, and then the Twilights return the favor. Berry Blasters now back in for a 3-3 three to three tie. And as long as this Blaster can just avoid anyone else, they do, and they get an extra point, which means they will advance out of the preliminary stage. True Blue Crew versus the Foresters now. This is not a rivalry matchup, or at least not as much as the previous two. Or at least, I don't think they have any beef over each other. Well, uh, of course, I don't know. I don't really focus on the personal lives of these marbles. But at the moment, the True Blue Crew are winning over the Foresters. And the Foresters have Alpine, I believe, coming in. Just going to rest in that one-point range, and this will stay as a tie. However, the next marble will be coming in. Will there be an impact? No, there won't, but it will be another point for True Blue Crew. Foresters want to get some consistent point scoring just like the True Blue Crew are, and they all are. All of them are landing in the one point. Every marble that's gone has scored a single point for a 3-3 tie. One marble each left to go. But there, the True Blue Crew... Bouncing off of the Foresters there. And in fact, that will keep it as a 3 to 3. With the last Forester to go to bounce, will it land in? Yes, it will. The Foresters overtake the True Blue Crew for a 4 to 3 victory. After a bit of a mistake from the uh, from the True Blue Crew there. Meanwhile, the Iron Skies 
being our first marble to land in the red zone. They're up against the Red Riots, who, as you may remember from the qualifiers, are a very, very uh, wrestling-heavy team. I don't know how you would call that, but uh, what I will say is that essentially the Red Riots just love hitting other marbles in curling. And as you can see right there, the Red Riots, very contact-heavy. Well, that's the word I was thinking of earlier. Very contact-heavy marbles. They love to hit the other team off of the house. The Iron Skies rising up to the challenge, being our first marble to score... Actually, no, not the first marble, but getting a point back on the board for the Iron Skies. You know, the Red Riots once again making contact with a marble outside the house and then rolling back into the points for a one-to-one -one tie with one more marble from each team to go. Oh, and that Iron Sky trying the contact way, but it actually benefits the Red Riots. So all the Red Riots need to do is avoid everyone else and get a few extra points while they're at it. The Red Riots, 4-1 to one over the Iron Skies. Ultraviolets now. They got dead last in the, in the previous event, so they definitely want to claw back some lost points to try and defend their championship. They were up against the Rosemary's, who I believe they had a uh, they have had a rivalry before, as you can tell. Ultraviolet's not playing around. They want those points and that advancement spot. However, they don't add to their score. You know, the Rosemary's calm, cool, and collected, maybe a little too much, as they roll back out of the house from that uh, from that impact off the wall. The Ultraviolet straight down the middle to land in the red, is it? Yes, it is in the red. Three, a four to zero. As that Rosemary maybe tries to make contact, but just can't get the roll. However, they will get the Rosemary's uh, a point on the board. Oh, and that Ultraviolet deciding to go after the Rosemary's and making contact with their own teammate while they're at it. With one more Rosemary to go, can they find a way to knock the Ultraviolets off? And no, they roll off themselves. So the Ultraviolets, having that one on the red circle, will advance. Ice Chippers and Team Watermelon now, the hosts of Season 3, have already gotten a gold medal, so I'm sure the fans are very happy about that. Meanwhile, Team Watermelon, they uh, they had a fantastic first half of the last season, but then the second half was almost abysmal, and they're going to want to see if they can recapture that uh, first half glory. And at the moment, it's not going to do anything, because the Ice Chippers have a three-pointer on the board. Team Watermelon, two marbles out of the house. Maybe a little bit of panicking backstage. As the Ice Chippers are kind of doing the same thing, just trying to make sure those marbles stay back there. As the Team Watermelon, once again, they just can't get that curl right. Keep They keep aiming themselves towards the, uh, the bottom corner. That's what are the Ice Chippers going to do. Once again, they have a, they have a very down-packed strategy, just making sure... Those marbles stay in the corner so that no weird bounces can happen. Meanwhile, the last Team Watermelon Marble bounces off the top where there are no marbles. And they will land in the three-point and they will take the win from being just a little bit closer to the button. Team Watermelon stealing it from the Ice Chippers at the last second. And that was very heartbreaking for Ice Chippers fans, I can tell you that much. And now we have the final preliminary heat. Team Clarity versus the Flaming Cobras. After their gold medal in balancing, Cobras had a bit of an abysmal funnel spinning. And so, I'm sure they're going to want to claw back some of those points, like the Ultraviolets are. But that will require advancing, and at the moment, they are not winning. In fact, they will get their first point here for a 3-1 to one after half of them have gone. Team Clarity right down the middle, making sure not to bounce off the back wall too hard to land in the points again. So Flaming Cobras really need to start thinking about strategy here, and they do! They fantastic impact on Team Clarity to get themselves a point and bring it to a tie. The Team Clarity need to find a way to bounce back from that, and actually in a fantastic turn of events, they managed to get the ends of the points despite contact with their own team. Can the Flaming Cobras stay in it? Will it roll back a little too far? It will remain a tie. And Team Clarity is closer to the button. So the Flaming Cobras 
will not place in the top half for a second event in a row. The Ice Chippers will be best of the rest. So now we go into the quarterfinals. Foresters versus the Black Markers. So the Black Markers one is going to roll down now, going the exact same direction as that Forester. And it's not quite going to work out for them, but they do get a point. Forester's closer to the button as it stands. Right down the middle for that one. Will it roll into the white? Just a little bit? No. That will just be one point. Forester's with the lead. As uh, this black marker rounding out the first half of the marbles going, and it will be a tie. Forester's struggling to get anywhere other than that one point circle. But points are points, and they will have the lead coming close to the end of this round. Ooh, the Black Markers with a very good hit. Did it knock that Forester out of the points? Not quite, but I believe... No, the Foresters are still closer to the button. So if they can have any bad impacts, the Foresters bounce off of their own team with only one marble to go. A little bit of panicking ensues, but the Black Markers do the same. That is so unfortunate. But also unfortunate for the Foresters, Black Markers have a marble just a little bit closer to the button. Red Riots and Berry Blasters now. Can the Red Riots outstrength the, the Strength Monsters? I, I don't know, that sounds a bit rude. I don't know if I want to say that. Anyway, Berry Blasters first on the board as the Red Riots miss that first one. And they also miss that contact. Very unusual of the Red Riots to miss that kind of contact. They, but they will get two points. Berry Blasters rolling into the one point to keep a, keep a steady lead over the Red Riots. The Red Riots once again missing that Berry Blaster, but this time it works out very well for them. They will get three points, landing on that red circle. Ooh, that Berry Blaster making a bit of a bit of a, a bit of an unfortunate curl, and only landing the one point. So they're now behind. As that Red Riot makes a fantastic hit on that Berry Blaster, sitting in the one point. So the Red Riots have a very strong score. And the Berry Blasters, their own worst enemy, are going to hit themselves out for a 6-2 loss to the Red Riots. The Red Riots hardly had to do any of their own contact. Berry Blasters did it all for them. But now we come to Team Clarity and the Wayfinders. The Wayfinders aiming to get another medal after, uh, after their first medal in the last event. Sort of uh, keep the streak going, if you will. However, Team Clarity... Team Clarity are very keen to put a stop to that and continue their own championship run. And it's going to work out for them so far with a tie after three have gone. Next Wayfinder coming down. They will land in the one point. And the Team Clarity only, only has one in the points while the Wayfinders have two and that is currently helping them. Oh, and this one. Ooh, will that one even land in the points? No, it won't. That is unfortunate for Team Clarity. Oh, and just to make sure, oh, hang on, no, that bounces back from them a little. Well, actually, that mixed fortunes, they get Team Clarity an extra point, but they also get themselves two points as Team Clarity makes some heavy contact. However, they won't lose two points, they'll only lose one point and stay in that one point range. Oh, hang on, that Wayfinder made contact on that Team Clarity marble down there, but it will not be enough as Team Clarity are eliminated. And the Wayfinders move on. Now the Ultraviolets, ready to get this championship defense started after that dead last in the last event. They were up against Team Watermelon, who stole the advancement stop from the Ice Chippers in the, uh, in the preliminary rounds. Well, Ultraviolets, I'm sure, are an experienced enough team as they won't let that happen. And look at this! 6-1! to one After only two have gone, but of course... Team Watermelon, being smart, will put a very quick end to that. The Ultraviolets will lose three points, but maintain the lead. Oh, and a very strong impact there from the Ultraviolets. Actually bounces them back into the house and gets them a point. And that Team Watermelon doing the exact same thing, almost using that red marble as a, as a rebound. Oh, and the Ultraviolets hit their own team. Once again, there's a lot of uh, a lot of self-inflicted harm in this event, and uh, I think all all that uh, Team Watermelon needs to do is just knock it away, and Team Watermelon will advance by being just a little bit closer to the button. Once again, 
So Team Clarity will be best of the uh, lower top half as we head into the semifinals. Now we start deciding the medalists. Red Riots and the Wayfinders. One of these two will go on to the gold medal match, of course. And the other will be relegated to the bronze medal match. As we have the... Oh, the Red Riots land in the red. Almost didn't notice that. And the Wayfinders just barely getting into the one point. Red Riots sitting very happy on four. And what will the Wayfinders do against that? Oh, my goodness. The Wayfinders make good contact. The Wayfinders seeing if they can find a way to outmaneuver the Red Riots. Sort of like a immovable object versus an irresistible force. Or, I, th I think I got that quote wrong. But either way, ooh, the Wayfinders not very much having a good one. They can contact their own team who is already out of the house. The Red Riots with no one to make contact with just will give themselves another point. With the Wayfinders having one more marble to come through, and the Wayfinders make a fantastic hit off of that Red Riot, and the Wayfinders will advance over the Red Riots. Red Riots probably kicking themselves over that one. And now we will see who will join the Wayfinders in the gold medal match. Wayfinders fans very happy as this guarantees them another medal. This will be two medals in a row, but will it be a gold? We will see soon enough as Team Watermelon has two points over the black markers, but as I say that, Team Watermelon, another self-inflicted harm, or self-inflicted wound, as the black markers come right through to give themselves another free point, essentially, as the Team Watermelon is just spread out at the back, and another straight down the middle, giving them Team, give, oh, no, rolls out of the two points. Just a little too much curling going on. Oh, and more heavy contact. Black Markers have their strategy down. And Team Watermelon is just getting essentially destroyed. Are we going to find a way to get back in the points? No. All of Team Watermelon have gone and none of them are in the points. So all the Black Markers need to do is, well, not that. That is definitely the opposite of what you want to do. But either way, they will take the win as Team Watermelon didn't score anything. But here we come to the bronze medal match. Team Watermelon could still salvage a medal. But we'll have to see. They're up against the Red Riots. And obviously it is very difficult to challenge the Red Riots. Who are very scary to face actually. Just because they constantly make contact. Even though the Wayfinders were able to outmaneuver them there. Oh and the Team Watermelon trying to hit that Red Riot. But missing and hitting themselves. Team Watermelon need a... A good talk on how not to hit their own opponents. Or maybe they think they're supposed to hit their own selves. I'm not sure. <laughs> Either way, Team Watermelon having a bit of a... A bit of a... Oh, well, hang on. They get into the points. Okay, so it's not all bad at the moment. The Red Riot's bouncing high off of that wall into the one points. All they need to do is just get themselves enough points. Because chances are Team Watermelon are going to hurt themselves. But Team Watermelon do give themselves another point. Maybe finally sorted themselves out. And the Red Riots right down the middle. And landing in the red for the Red Riots to take the bronze. Team Watermelon could not do anything about that. They will take fourth in this event. But now we head to the gold medal match. The Wayfinders versus the Black Markers. The Wayfinders already happy that they're guaranteed a medal. But they could be going for gold here, as the Wayfinders get themselves one point over the Black Marker Zero after one marble apiece is gone. Ooh, and a great contact there by the Wayfinders, but the Black Markers manage to find their way back into the points. Wayfinders have an early lead, but of course the Black Markers are not going to let that happen, and that Black Marker knocks everyone off the field and brings it back to a 0-0. Two goose eggs, as this Wayfinder going high... Landing, try to make sure get on that one point. And yes, it will. Wayfinders back in the lead. Oh, that black marker making a bit of a... a curled pretty poorly there into their own team. And the Wayfinders doing the same thing. These, these teams are not happy with each other for some reason. Because they're just constantly hitting each other. As who we got next. Another... Oh no, a black marker... Rolls down. Took a while to roll down. Obviously, he was having a small talk with his coach. And it's not going to do anything. The Wayfinders will get gold. And the Black Markers will sell for silver. While the Red Riots get bronze. 
Look at that, the Wayfinders. They only got their first medal ever in the last event, and they followed that up with a gold. Meanwhile, Iron Skies down the bottom, Gardner's Rosemary's, very poor performances from them. Berry Blaster's right in the middle, with the Flaming Cobras just inside the top 10. So that boosts the Wayfinders into the lead as the Ice Trippers fall just below, while the Iron Skies hold the bottom.